Aloha Biochem. In this video, we continue in chapter two and discuss the periodic table. So this time we cover section 2.4, the periodic table. Now we've all seen this table before, so let's take a look at it. Here it is, it has this interesting shape and it lists all of the elements that we know about. So for example, the element gold is right here. That's element number 79. And then phosphorus is over there. That's element 15. And every element is on here. Of course, you should know where the, uh, the four big ones are, right? Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Those are the most important ones in biochemistry, but there are several other ones that are important, which you should know about as well. So let's take a look at a few interesting things about the table, and then I'll show you several examples of different periodic tables, which tell you different types of things about the elements. Here are some notes. I hope they're not too small to see. What the table is, is it's an organized list of the 118 elements or 118 different types of atoms. Because remember, each element has its own unique type of atom. Now it's an organized list rather than just a long list of the elements. Uh, they are organized into this interesting arrangement that we'll talk more about uh, in a moment. Now the table lists the elements in order by increasing atomic number, not atomic mass, as we discussed a couple of videos back. So the elements are ordered by their atomic number. For instance, uh, you know, hydrogen, this is uh, the first element because its atomic number is one. All hydrogen atoms have one proton, and everything with one proton we call hydrogen. Element number two is helium. So all helium atoms have two protons because its atomic number is two. And then element number three is lithium. Their atoms have three protons, and so on, all the way up to element 118. Now the table has seven rows, which are called periods, and 18 columns, which are called groups. On this table, you can see the periods listed. So this is uh, period number one, this row, and then period number two, three, four, all the way up to uh, six and seven. Now, this little uh, island out here actually fits right into periods six and seven. So if you can imagine squeezing this little mini row right in there as part of period six, and then this uh, several elements right in there into period seven. So they're really part of periods six and seven. Now the groups are the columns. So this is group one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 18. But there is an alternative group numbering scheme that uses A's and B's and Roman numerals. So this is group 1A, 2A. Then here are the B's. Let's skip over them for the moment. And then 3A, 4A, 5A, all the way up to 8A. And then you can go through the B's. This is 3B, 4B, 5B, and so on. There's an important reason for that alternative group numbering scheme that uh, we may mention in the next video. But for now, uh, the rows are the periods and the columns are the groups. And this allows us to quickly uh, identify an element if we simply indicate its row and column or its period and group. So the element which is in period four and group nine, well, go to period four and then all the way up to group nine, that's right there, and that's cobalt, 
the metal cobalt. And then the element in period three in group 7A, that would be chlorine right here. So period three, then all the way up to, this is 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and then you get to chlorine. But why the weird shape? So what is the deal with this uh, strange arrangement? You have this tall portion over here and this other tall portion over there and then this rectangle. What's going on here with that interesting shape? The reason for the interesting shape is that the chemical and physical properties of the elements repeat as you go down the list of elements from number one all the way to number 118 you will see the properties you know of the elements uh, repeating over and over and over and that's what causes this interesting arrangement so we say that the properties are periodic hence the name periodic table of elements so let's see what we mean by repeating properties and how it leads to this arrangement. Um, starting with the first element, imagine all 118 elements are simply listed in a big long row. Okay, so you have one row of elements starting from number one all the way to 118. And you examine the properties of every element, well, Starting with element number one is hydrogen. It has certain chemical and physical properties. And then going to element number two, helium, its properties are different than hydrogens. But when you get to element number three, the third one in the list, its properties are similar to hydrogens. And so what we do is we place element number three, lithium, right below hydrogen. We put it back underneath element number one because they have similar properties. However, element number four has new properties and so it doesn't go underneath any other element that came before it. It starts its own column in element number five, six, seven, eight, nine, likewise have different unique properties and so they do not go underneath any other elements before them. They start at the top of their own column. But getting to element number 10, neon, the 10th one in the list, has similar properties to helium. So that is placed underneath the helium element. And then when we get to element 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, all of those eight elements have similar properties to elements three through 10. And so elements 11 through 18 are placed underneath elements three through 10. And so that you know makes the columns longer. And then when you get to elements 19 and 20, that's cal uh, potassium and calcium, they have similar properties to elements 11 and 12, so they are placed underneath the columns of 11 and 12, but then elements 21 through 30 have unique properties unlike any that came before them, so they uh, don't go underneath of any other element. They start the top of their own column. And then 31 through 36 have similar properties, as 13 through 18 and five through 10. And so they continue those columns. They're placed underneath those elements. And that's how it goes. And you end up with this interesting shape and uh, it's, it's very recognizable, uh, you know, but that's where the shape comes from. It's because the properties of the elements are periodic. Now let's take a look at several examples of different periodic tables and um, uh, when you you know search for periodic tables and, and you want to find your own you'll find millions of them out there on the web 
uh, people have come up with all different kinds of periodic tables. I, I haven't counted all of them, but th there are probably hundreds of thousands at least. Um, this one that we're looking at right here is one of my favorite ones. It has lots of information on it. Uh, it for example, it, uh, if you zoom in on uh, any particular element right here, um, you know, th this, uh, you know, tells you what all of the stuff is in there. So, uh, you know, the element symbol, it has the element name. Um, you don't have to memorize the symbols. You know, some periodic tables don't have the name and you just need to know what the symbol means. It tells us the atomic number, uh, the atomic mass. And then this table also has the group number and the period number. I like that. Um, plus it color codes the elements by uh, their properties. So the blue ones are the metals, the green ones are the non-metals, and then these orange ones are the metalloids. And in addition to that, uh, the, the font, if the element symbol is written in black, then those elements are uh, come in the solid form. So under normal conditions, you will find copper as a solid and the elements that are written with blue font you'll find them as a gas so uh, a lot of the non-metals are gases right here uh, there are a couple of liquid elements those have the red font so bromine and uh, mercury uh, this table says that there are two liquid elements now the ones with the clear font are the synthetic elements they're the ones that are made by humans, you don't find them in nature, or at least not yet. So that's kind of interesting. And, and this table right here has uh, a lot of useful information on it, and I like it. I like the, the colors too. But let's take a look at a few others. This is figure uh, 2.1 in your textbook. This is a pretty simple table. Um, it color codes the elements by uh, the metal and the non-metal. So the metals are on the left-hand side. They're the green ones. And then the non-metals are the blue ones. And the metalloids are the orange ones. This one also has the periods and uh, group numbers as well. Uh, but it doesn't have the element names. So it, you just have to know that this is copper and, and that's zinc and that's silver. So the more you... Uh, familiarize yourself with the element symbols the more you remember but um, I don't yet know what all of the symbols stand for I know a lot of them but not quite all of them so some of these down here I'd have to look up what those mean uh, this table right here tells us which elements come as uh, molecules so which ones are the molecular elements, they are highlighted in yellow and orange. I'll remind you what the molecular elements are. Um, we discussed these in a previous video. Hydrogen, if you have some of the element hydrogen around, its particles that compose it are not single atoms. They're actually two atoms that like to latch on to each other as molecules. You will not find hydrogen in the form of monatomic hydrogen. If you do have single atoms of hydrogen, they are unstable and they are looking to latch back on to form two atom molecules. And many elements exist as diatomic molecules. Hydrogen does, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. In fact, if you find these diatomic molecular elements on the table, it looks like it's a shape of a seven. You see these uh, purple ones? It looks like a seven. And so chemists sometimes call this the rule of sevens because there are seven of them and it looks like a seven, except for hydrogen. A few other molecular elements exist, but uh, they like to form molecules with more than two atoms. So phosphorus, for instance, is a molecular element, and four atoms of phosphorus like to attach together in the form of this tetrahedral structure. Here is the ball and stick model, and that perhaps is the more accurate space filling model. And phosphorus is right there. The other ones that are right next to phosphorus in green also 
come as polyatomic molecular elements. Sulfur is, is one of them. Sulfur likes to form S8 molecules with eight sulfur atoms attached in a ring-shaped molecule. Here's the ball and stick model and here's the space filling model and sulfur is right there. Selenium also has S8 molecules. Now the rest of the ones in gray are uh, atomic elements and, and their tiniest particles are atoms. But there are a few molecular elements. So that's that table right there. This one right here, this is figure 2.9 in your textbook. This table is useful when we start doing electron configurations. So this is called the S block. Uh, these ones over here are, that's the S block. This is the P block, the, this purple uh, rectangle over here. And, and this is the D block and this is the F block. And each block is also further separated. So you have the 1S, the 2S, the 3S, the 4S, and then the P block is separated into the 2P row, the 3P row, the 4P row, and so on. And, and we'll talk more about this periodic table when we start doing electron configurations in the next video. This table right here is figure 2.5 in the textbook. And this one colors the elements over here and the elements over there blue and those are called the main group elements. So the blue ones are the main group elements. So these and those are main group elements. So if somebody says I'm talking about a main group element, well, it's somewhere in here or there. The rectangle in the middle, these are the transition metals. So this is the transition metal section and the little island out there, those are the inner transition metals. This is a, a useful one right here. It separates the metals and the nonmetals uh, into further categories. So remember a couple periodic tables back, uh, you have the metals on the left and the nonmetals on the right. Well, the metals can be further subdivided and the nonmetals can also be further subdivided. And, and some of those columns are given special names so here we go. Um, uh, the first column over here, if you, you know, ignore hydrogen, the rest of the column, these are the alkali metals, the alkali metals. And then that's column number one, group number one. Well, group number two, these metals are called alkaline earth metals. Perhaps you've heard of the term alkaline earth metals or alkaline. Alkaline is, um, sometimes synonymous with basic, you know, you have acidic and basic. Some people like to call basic alkaline. So these are the alkaline earth metals. The yellow ones in here, these are uh, the transition metals as we've already seen on the last table. And uh, these green ones, um, these are called the basic metals. Okay, I didn't know that. So those are called basic metals, um, tin, lead, uh, gallium, aluminum, basic metals. The blue ones right here, those are the metalloids. Remember the metalloids have properties between metal and non-metal. So those blue ones are the metalloids. Now the, uh, the purplish ones are the bluish purple ones, which contain hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, phosphorus, and selenium. Those seven elements are simply called non-metals. Okay, now the second to last column, this is an important column. These are the halogens right here. And then the last column is the noble gas column. Um, and then down here, these inner transition metals can be divided into the lanthanide series and the actinide series. So lanthanides and actinides, they fit right in here. Now this periodic table also uh, tells you which elements are solids, liquids, and gases. So solids have black font, liquids have blue font, and gases have clear font. Okay, so you see those two liquid elements 
mercury and bromine. Now some of the other elements are easily converted into liquid. I think uh, gallium, in fact, if you just hold a piece of gallium metal in your hand, it, that's enough heat to actually melt it, and gallium will melt in your hand. All right, here's that table that I like. So this is my table of choice. Now, there are, um, uh, oh, here's the arrangement that shows you how the, the inner transition metals fit into the table. So you remember, if you go back to this one, if it, you know, these elements right here kind of squeeze in right there. And if you want to see how they squeeze in to become part of period six and seven, well, there you go. There, there it is. So period one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are very long periods. Okay. Uh, no one uh, uses uh, a table like this long. Um, well, maybe some people do, but uh, al almost always you'll see the inner transition metals, uh, you know, separated from the rest of them, like this little island out there. Now, some periodic tables just have uh, uh, a plethora of data, you know, tons and tons of information. So here's an example of, of one that just has so much information on there. If you look at any particular element, uh, say zinc right there, here's a little, uh, you know, um, you know, co uh, here's a little a key which tells you everything inside uh, the, the elements box. So it does have the atomic number. Um, and the atomic weight, but it tells you what temperature it boils at in Kelvin, so, and also the melting temperature. So zinc melts at 692 Kelvin and 1180 Kelvin, and it tells us the density of zinc. It's 7.14 grams per centimeter cube. It tells us the element symbol and the element name. Now it also tells us the electron configuration, which we'll be using in the next chapter. And then there's a couple of, uh, there's a, what else is it? The oxidation states. Um, we'll talk more about oxidation states in a later chapter. Um, now this table didn't have quite enough information on there. And so on the opposite backside, uh, there's a second one. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you find zinc again, um, uh, th there was zinc. What else can we know about zinc? Well, here it is. Um, information on the crystal structure. This zinc comes in a hexagonal type of crystal structure, um, acid base properties, uh, you know, the, how big the atom is, the atomic radius, a couple of different atomic radiuses, how much volume the atom occupies. So it's atomic volume and lots of other uh, properties of the element zinc, just an enormous amount of data. So this one is kind of cool to, uh, to have available. Uh, you reference uh, it from time to time. Now, there are uh, also a lot of fun uh, periodic tables out there. So here's the periodic table of New York City trash. If you've ever walked around New York City and examined all the different types of trash out there. Um, so let's see, uh, how about, um, uh, a big gulp cup, 7-Eleven big gulp cup. Uh, how about a pull tab for a can? A chicken bone, see lots of them. Um, broken eggshells, okay, so lots of different types of trash you'll find in New York City. A Q-tip, isn't that good? Don't you love finding that? A floss pick, okay, a Band-Aid, so. Uh, what else? Here's a periodic table of meat. Um, so it's even color coded, red meats, poultry, seafood, mixed, um, lots of different types of meats out there. So uh, for example, here's some grilled fish, baked fish, fried fish, sashimi, shrimp, shellfish, squid, lobster, tuna, crab, blackened fish, um, meatballs, chili, you know, goes on and on. Um, Okay, which ones are gamey? <laughs> uh, so, okay. 
So the gamey ones, okay, here are the gamey ones. Ostrich, deer, wild boar, rabbit, elk. Um, this is an interesting one. I, I like this one. This is kind of useful. The elements in their country of discovery. So lots of them were discovered in the UK, you know, high, or by UK scientists, hydrogen, sodium, magnesium, and lots of, uh, some of them are shared between two different countries. So boron uh, was discovered jointly by a UK and a French scientists. So, um, you know, America came on the scene a little bit later and, uh, you know, there were certain discoveries uh, by American scientists of the later elements, you know, the ones way down here. Okay, this one is interesting. This is my favorite fun periodic table, the periodic table of elephants. So um, the element magnesium, here's an elephant that looks like a magnet, magnesium. How about... Um, uh, uh, sodium, the elephant with the pink umbrella. Does that look familiar? You ever seen those Morton salt containers with that little girl holding the pink, pink umbrella? Um, scandium, scandium. It's an elephant with a barcode, you know, like it's being scanned. A titanium elephant on a bike. You know, a lot of bicycle parts are made out of titanium. Uh, vanadium, vanadium. Here's an elephant looking at itself in the mirror. It's vain. Um, a zirconium, uh, an elephant on top of a ring looks like a diamond elephant, but you know, zirconium is, uh, looks like diamond, but it's, you know, uh, fake diamonds. So if you have a, you know, a girl that you want to propose to, rather than spending all that money on a diamond ring, how about go get a zirconium ring? She'll never know. Um, hafnium. That's a half of an elephant. Uh, yeah, I always, you can find so many interesting ones. Silver, AG is silver. So you have that, uh, that Lone Ranger riding his elephant. Remember the Lone Ranger, it's this character, old TV show, rode on a horse named Silver. Aluminum is an aluminum foil elephant. Okay, well, I can keep going on that one. So check it out. Um, now, this building right here is one of the chemistry buildings at the university where I went to undergrad, uh, Virginia Tech University in the state of Virginia. It's also called Virginia Polytechnic and State uh, University. And one of its chemistry buildings was designed to look like the periodic table from a certain perspective. So if you're standing over here on this lawn and you're looking at the building that way, then you see the periodic table. Okay, you see that tall section, you know, transition metals and then the non-metal section over here. So these are the main group and then the, uh, the transition metals right there. And, and so uh, this is actually a model of the building. I, I couldn't find a picture of the real building where it looks uh, a lot like the table, but, um, kind of cool. This is Davidson Hall at uh, Virginia Tech University in Blacksburg, Virginia. So, well, that was it. Uh, lots of tables out there. This is my, what's my favorite one. There it is. In our next lecture, we will uh, discuss the electronic structure of atoms and electron configurations. So stay tuned for that. Aloha.